Dear friends, glad to see you again on Fagin Live. It's Tuesday, 31st of May, the last day of this month. And it is two minutes past nine in Kiev and Moscow. Day 97, glad to have Alexei Rostovich with us here. Likewise, hello everybody. Those 100,000 that are watching us live, please share links to our cast right away. Uh, it is important to push our content. Of course, it's summer and war, so I understand there are restrictions for increasing the audience, but make sure that those who need to see that cast do see it. And subscribe to Fagin Live and Alexei Rostovich. If you're watching that in English, subscribe to the Privateer Station. We're trying to catch up with uh, all of the casts of these two and uh, have English version of these War Chronicles with real life data. All right, let's start. Another day has passed. Any good news, perhaps? It's nothing really too exciting. Today is probably one of the days when there will not be any specific sensations, but we can indicate, we can point at some things. First of all, according to Lugansk leadership, Sergei Gaidai, um, most of Serdanyevsk is under occupants. As always they do, they destroy everything and then come in. They might announce that they have captured the city, even though they're still fighting for it. But you need to understand that Severodonetsk is lower than Lysychansk. And Lysychansk has the whole city view for hitting the targets in there. And another thing that after taking Severodonetsk, the occupants see a wonderful field of chemical factories in front of them. Here's the picture. There are two of them. See that semi-yellow orange plume? What is it? That is a successful hit by Russians on one of the nitrogen acid tanks. A very poisonous story. And our administration announced that whoever is staying there, please prepare the respiratory protection. What one needs to understand, there's a lot of chemical factories in the area and adversary that is hitting that area with artillery, they, let me pick the Russian word for that, they threaten, not exactly the exact word, but, oh, so English word is faces, they're facing the ecological and chemical catastrophe in that territory and uh, of course local citizens and their troops but we know they don't give a flying f about their troops yeah we do but still we need to mention that i understand they're the ones who uh, tried to dig trenches in chernobyl forest yes oh yeah they don't give a shit about their troops but uh, okay so propagandists will likely shout that they got severodonetsk on the other hand, our concept is quite understandable there. We make them waste and spend a lot of resources in street fighting and uh, make them pay dearly for every street they progress on. All right, so we understand that it's probably not possible to hold Severodonetsk and maybe it doesn't even make sense in a strategic way. But further positions uh, like Lysychansk, how fortified is that? what uh, about the area that's beyond the line separating Papasna and ba uh, connecting Papasna and Bakhmut? They try to get there, but we do have our positions there, which is not so easy to capture. And we also got artillery reinforcement that started putting things in perspective and in right place. So it is difficult, but it is definitely not sad for us there. Our command continues with uh, their plans and, briefly speaking, they are making sure the enemy gets hit by our artillery. 
and we want them to waste any troop that is possible and capable that is capable of uh, performing assault activities. We want them to waste that during that capture. Of course, it is a big tragedy for people who living uh, were living in Severodonetsk, but on the military side, it is a very logical operation of making Russians waste their resources because Severodonetsk is a no exit route compared to Lysychansk. You're capturing a city that's being overseen, overviewed but from Lysychansk 100%. So, strategically, it's a totally dumb idea, but at some point for them to report to Moscow. So, answer me this. What are you guys missing to completely kick the Russians out of that area? Kick them out from Papasna, from Severodonetsk? And just your point of view, I understand it's not an official Ukraine statement. It's What do you think? What is Ukraine lacking? American weapons, more personnel? I think we're missing three, four, or even two, four, two, three brigades, full-scale brigades ready to fight, mechanized, heavy. According to our current disposition on the front, even one brigade of that caliber is worth its weight in gold. And if Germans would have given us weapons on time, we would have at least one brigade like that, or maybe two. And they didn't give anything. Yeah, they promised, they voted for 88 leopards, 50 leopards, and uh, a certain amount of Panzer 2000s and 100 ma martyrs. And none of that arrived, right? Yes. I was actually talking today to German press, and I put a funny video on my Instagram. Oh, I've seen you with uh, fries and sausages, yes. I was talking to Germans and I was asking them, how do you take Schultz's explanations for delays in weapons supply? The lower chamber already voted to support it and people support it. And they're answering that, you know, they, he has explanations that are irrelevant or have very lack uh, seriously lack connection to reality so I try to improvise with uh, my questions and concerns to Schultz in that funny video that I made with a Belgian flag um, because in his words he's saying we're giving money and we're supporting but the problem is money do not fight wars it's equipment that helps us to fight wars do you have an explanation why is he doing that of course, I think he cannot choose the political line. He's being pushed by very opposite political forces. One of them says, let's uh, fully engage into this conflict and stop Russian aggression. Another side says, it's not so simple. We need to find our special way. We should not let Putin get defaced. And we cannot allow Ukraine to clearly win. So, ultimately, it's American continentalists fighting with American Euro-Atlantists. Uh, we thought that ended during the Second World War. No, that's actually fighting right now. You know, back in the day, there was Haushofer, who was a big uh, political ideologist of that. Sorry for interrupting you. Yeah, so today, German press published a very interesting article that says, we are ashamed of this government because they're not saying yes and not saying no and they're not clearly siding or making decision and it's uh, it, it's a shame for our country to have such a government and that's exactly what the reporters were telling me today they were apologizing uh, during the interview for because his explanations are off target and they're also concerned that he doesn't even have a unified line of explanations one statement would be, we do support Ukraine. Then Minister of Defense comes back saying, well, we sent a list to Chancellery. And you have not approved that. On the internal bureaucratic market, there are no explanations. Germans themselves are saying very often it's uh, direct 
lies and uh, false information that he's using. So that's an interesting situation with Germany. Okay, we have almost 260,000 people watching us. Those who are joining, do not forget to subscribe and share this cast. Click that like button. Very important, that's how these videos get promoted. Every click shows it to 10 more people. Help us to bring more people. Okay, let me finish with Schultz here. There is a, a good illustration to his behavior. Schultz said today that Greece will support Ukraine tanks, Russian-made tanks, and in replacement Greece will get German tanks. Problem is, Ger Greece does not have Russian tanks. They have some armored vehicles, but they don't have tanks. So it's difficult. Maybe Greece can find something on Cyprus, but there's a big question. And then immediately um, Duda chimes in and says, we actually supply 260 tanks to Ukraine. And German government should have supplied us with Leopards, but they didn't. So there were agreements that Germans are breaking. How we can rely on your support when you're leaving us holding the bag empty. And there is still no answer from Germany. All right, let's hope there are some people watching us in Germany, maybe. And they will have a chance to address their deputies and in their press to address that. Germany is doing a lot. I have to mention that Germany is actually doing a lot for our refugees. But there is a very concrete story with heavy armaments. And we do know that uh, most Germans voted to support that. And the fact of uh, lower chamber vote speaks to that as well. It's not just a public opinion. But still, there is no decision. All right, let's address MRLS systems. It looks like you are getting some. What kind, how many, what missiles. Let's discuss that. Um, first of all, a good hysterical statement. Never made things worse. So after, I suppose, after that show we had a few days ago, we are getting um, some. So in essence, those that are flying 300 miles far are essentially the analog of Russian Iskander missile. And Russian press, official Russian media was happy to state that uh, damned Ukrainians are not getting shit from the United States. But um, Mr. McFall published a special tweet saying, guys, do not worry, we will provide you with MLRS. And I did respond to this, that, that it would be nice to have those 300 miles missiles, but they're not too critical. Even 70 miles radius, the other modification will satisfy our needs over the head. They're still rather precise, and they do allow us to hit Russian missiles and Russian MLRS systems. This is a counter-artillery fight weapon. And the next thing what we would need is the 50 of those German Jeopards, because they help us, they could help us bring down Russian aviation that is uh, continuing to tear our front lines. So Germans are not giving that, but Americans seems like uh, more eager and fast to give some. I don't know they can provide more than three divisions, but it would uh, definitely change the situation because I suspect not four of them will arrive immediately, they'll probably come piecemeal, but this strong and very accurate weapon will have a capability to change the front and will allow us to win counter-artillery fights. And in a close fighting, close combat fighting, our troops win every time they engage Russians. Armored vehicles, uh, mortars, Field, field artillery, we're nailing them. 
they cannot stand our attacks. But uh, counter artillery fights is important. We were pretty successful before, then we ran out of certain type of ammunitions, and right now that support will be a game-changing situation for us, even if we get as many as 20, uh, or as little as 20, that'll be very noticeable, Russians will not be able to advance much, and then if we get 40 or 60, that'll be a much bigger change to the whole front. So what's your opinion, why did Biden make a statement that they're not giving 300 miles version. Mark, there is a... Uh, I, I look at this question this way. Okay, we could have gotten, let's say, 200 of these missiles. We could have used them and shot something pretty far out and maybe hit some ammo depot, warehouses, for operating centers, maybe some refueling stations, that would be nice, and we of course would appreciate it, but it would not have changed the general character of war, because Russians would have brought new fuel, new munitions, and we've, we could have got a bit of advantage temporarily, but perhaps at a price not acceptable for Biden at this moment. What is that price? Well, see, Russia is in communication with the Biden government. They're probably trading something or discussing options. So when there is a discussion going, uh, they're probably making certain concessions. Russia might agree to open our ports or to exchange some of the prisoners of war. And America needs to do something in return, and that could be exactly that. All right, I agree, but we haven't seen yet anything about uh, prisoners of war, and we have not seen the ports yet. So, according to some analysis that we have, they might be preparing their society for prisoners of war exchange, but uh, it's a very early signs, and we'll see if they will come through. But in general, it is an indicator that they still have a communication line. So first of all, war is getting more civilized. So it's getting to a semi-managed situation, which decreases the risks of more serious escalation, such as nuclear or chemical. And Americans may think that the cost of for that uh, de-escalation is perhaps not supplying a missile that shoots for 300 miles. I'm saying that for us to solve our battle problems, uh, the one that flies for 70 miles will be more than enough. And the ones that are 300 miles out will find ways to get to them too. The question is different, is that Americans with this supply of MLRS armaments they'll make a very serious step forward. This is the weapon that will cause a lot of grief to Russian troops, up to and including taking away their capability of any offensive, because they will not quite be able to store or aggregate enough troops and supplies to reinforce the possible offensive. And Izum and Severodonetsk this week are happening only because we are out of weapons that can reach them several tens of kilometers deep into their territory. So now that we got those uh, howitzers and we got 150 millimeter shells, the character of the war changed immediately. We got more hits, we got a couple of the command posts destroyed, resupply lines destroyed, and now we have 155 millimeter artillery coming and perhaps we'll get the MLRS and some HIMARS. That will be a different story on the front. But Americans are trying to avoid a escalation of a higher level, I think. And they're still keeping a communication line that allows them to a little better control of the conflict. So any additional control, uh, counter control channel for the situation 
uh, is a is an advantage. So it's understandable they might want to keep that. And for us, you know, even that minimal configuration is good enough to solve our immediate problem and enough ammunition that's another very important factor so we can keep shooting without saving so how when how can you gauge when these mlrs systems can show up on the front it is difficult to say it depends upon when they make a decision how to do that by sea or by air so it is a question of a few weeks and not of tomorrow but they did transport about 90 howitzers in a little more than a week to us so use several flights of the military transport aviation this is not too big of a deal if they do want to expedite that but it might take a couple of weeks all right so that is addressed now let's talk about the sixth set of sanctions that has been announced we see that that halfway embargo has been implemented. We need to mention that there is a term for that implementation, and it's about six months. Basically, to the end of this year, the countries will have time to implement that embargo, but overall, this embargo will be up to 90% of Russian supplies. Yeah, that's a good figure. But what do you think is a perspective for going to the seventh set of sanctions, which will also cover the natural gas supplies? Because there are screams now, especially the Chancellor of Austria is screaming that it will negatively affect everything in the economy. And of course, Austria is one of the major beneficiaries of Russian oil because uh, they do have storage facilities and they serve as a hub for some of those pipelines. So statement was made by our president today that 50 days between the fifth and the sixth package of sanctions is too much. And he did address the statement from Scholz that we gave one billion dollars a euro to Ukraine to support counter invasion activities at the same time one needs to keep in perspective that russia is making about over a billion euro daily uh, from their energy supplies to europe so all that can continue for quite a while if both sides will receive certain tempos certain amounts of monetary support that's why our president uh, did voice this concern and said this is unacceptable but from the point of view how difficult how much energy was needed to push that set of sanctions because it really approached the sanctum centaurum the essentially the trade of energy commodities with Russia and uh, it's not fully accepted yet but they did announce that there'll be a day or two while they ratify everything and then another thing that European Union prohibited any insurance service to Russian ships bringing oil around the world and we do know that's a big story because well traders refuse to carry uninsured oil on their ships and that's a very serious one of the major anti-sanctions means so they'll feel it 10 years ago a similar effort in relation to Iranian loads caused Iran to sit down at the table of negotiations and address the matter so it still causes questions and concerns from Cyprus and Malta but they do have time to negotiate with them and to adapt systems so if now it if they actually push it through in the next couple of days it will be i'm keeping my fingers crossed it will be a serious step forward i did not expect such a step from european union because they've been on the russian oil and gas needle for quite a while so for me 
their intention and they're following through on them if they implement them. It, it is a big achievement. All right, we have about 340,000 watching us live. We are for almost 25 minutes live on the air and you know what to do. Subscribe, like, like. I would not go deeper into that, not to cause the wrath in the chat. So what about another uh, commission of Macfall and Yermak about personal sanctions? Since we heard that Europe Europeans might be considering Kabaeva, uh, Putin's ex-mistress and mother of uh, supposedly two more kids um, to get under these sanctions but we heard that Sberbank will be turned off from SWIFT soon but we still are yet to hear about what will be imposed on the physical persons but just like it was in one of the literatures maybe we'll hear something interesting about the enemies of Ukraine um, I cannot confirm everything in details but I should say that we are working on personal sanctions very intensively um, okay so we got just more details just a few seconds ago that Germany will supply Greece with a hundred marbles and Greece will supply Soviet equipment to Ukraine can I switch to expletives? Oh, yes, of course. Mr. Schultz, you are an amazing human. This is cooler than expletive. Much cooler. Okay, we'll think how to answer that, but... You know, if you'll start cussing Schultz, we may have German embassies writing notes of protest, asking to remove you from this live cast. This is seriously concerning because we had some concerns about them supporting Russia. We kind of saw that with the previous chancellor, when who, whose, whose behavior was very unexplainable or rather would be very explainable from a very corrupt point of view. Oh, it is very explainable. And one can provide that explanation after which our intellectuals actually side note here um, there is a category that I really am trying to avoid hitting or getting into is becoming a public intellectual so this is a group of people who look intellectual by repeating somebody else's ideas and behind them there is another group of people who also don't have their own thoughts but repeat whatever these public intellectuals regurgitate so they have already addressed me once saying that how could you say that about Merkel she's uh, a wonderful leader and I've known quite a few things about the back dealings there and I I just smiled at that it's ridiculous I just want to remind the words of Zelensky who used it back in March uh, he said if to abbreviate that because his phrase was diplomatic and winded uh, he, he said that our peoples will give you a mark, will estimate your efforts, will we'll judge, will judge you, our peoples will judge you. When people want to support certain actions and the government is trying to weasel away or through, it is unacceptable. In conditions of uh, democracy, such behavior should lead to the crash of certain political figures, along with uh, making certain directions of politics bankrupt, morally bankrupt. Additionally, I translated that if you will behave yourself like this, we reserve the right to turn to your people over your heads. Uh, but that's just my point of view, because that's how I thought one could interpret that message. Because I understand government should not implement people's desire to with 100% accuracy because people usually do not have all the classified information and do not have the bigger picture. But also the government cannot ignore the will of people 
because they have to represent them. And it doesn't seem like this matter means here much because Parliament did vote. They need to follow Parliament. Um, I want to correct here saying that people of the country sometimes may not know the details of everything, but they usually feel the change of flow just as well as ocean creatures know their habitat. European voters know the price of this question. They know where is the truth and how they should be helped and how what resources need to be supplied. And it's just the governments that are trying to deceive their peoples and uh, deceive us and other allies. I want to state my point of view here. Some other government could have afforded themselves such a behavior which would not have a long tail of Kremlin shenanigans, uh, pretty dirty Kremlin shenanigans. We understand that Schroeder story was just about money and especially social democrats that are in the leading positions of their political coalition one needs probably to persist and push back and say that uh, we are not corrupt we're not working with russia we are not engaged with them on any monetary level so that would be a prudent behavior for such a government and now in the current situation everybody will point fingers at them and think that russia probably bought them even if it is not so it'll be impossible or quite hard to explain with other arguments because nobody will believe them problem is mark that people mostly for the most part are using emotional memory now may, not many people remember what happened at the very first couple of days of this war what did people live through and what were their thinking and these days many people are trying to explain decisions and politics that was done now they're saying that since russians are not shelling kiev it's not too bad could have been much worse and they're sort of omitting the first days of war when they were right here, when they were fighting on the outskirts of the city and using missiles to hit buildings in Kyiv. Um, remember also in this relation the Stream 2 project uh, when uh, Russia was going to supply more energy reserves to Europe. And some powers in Europe were saying that no, of course it is not a weapon, it is not an economic weapon. And you look at it these days and you see how wrong that party was. Because Russia right now is using that energetic energy supply as the war in the war with NATO and Europe. Problem is that it does not diminish the problem. Uh, look at what's happening in Ukraine. We derailed their special operation when they started did take us a bit but we succeeded and now it goes into a different phase of war and some European governments do not understand that military threat also exists to mask other things that are being used by no, or utilized by non-military solutions for example if you would come at me with a big knife I would be looking at knife and all concentrated on that you could use a different hand to in the meantime to add some cyanide in my coffee and I would not have noticed so that is somewhat what I've been noticing about the Russian behavior and what is concerning is the helplessness of Europe in this regard what else do these countries need to see that natural gas is being used as a weapon against them oil is being used against them and they're still having a discussion whether they should implement second set of sanctions where it touches about gas deliveries. So imagine some vampires sucking our blood and we're discussing here 
maybe we should not really pull him away because it's such a rapid transition maybe vampire will get sick we need to give him a chance and save his face well let's see how the situation emerges maybe something will change i think we'll have an opportunity to see the consequences and one thing is us here in the live show uh, there probably will be some reaction on the official circles so it's curious to see their behavior so we've been live for about 35 minutes i think tomorrow we'll have an opportunity we do have one tomorrow at nine right yes okay i wanted to show one thing yesterday we mentioned that in relation to our show we do have uh, we do have an aspect where we post nft creations on the open sea um, they're not just from ukraine they're actually from all over the world that we publish there and we've been looking for Vyacheslav yalov who has lost his mother and is now taking care of his younger four kids also who's lost the mother so he's being their family figure and at the same time he's barely 18 years old so we found him and sent him 2000 euros to try to help and alleviate his situation he's also on facebook so if you want to find him and help him find him on facebook and try to help the guy to keep his family they're young and he's doing a pretty awesome thing trying to support them after their mother died was killed by russian shelling in the next few days we'll give information about more families that were trying to help mark remember we also tried to help a girl perhaps somebody knows her whereabouts and her name dear friends we do have a problem we're looking for that girl we only have a picture i'll send it to my assistant constantin so the girl got herself in a very difficult situation we'll show her on the screen in the meantime constantin is setting up the display and i understand she's one of many who knows how many hundreds of people are like that but we're trying um well we have a couple more minutes how did you react to the publications about putin's health his revival and other weird things do you think it's a big information campaign of special services of the west to push the surroundings of putin to deactivate him because many people are cursing saying i always curse and <clears throat> look for blood so yes please explain what's your opinion on this i think it's probably a push to think about a perspective because he is not forever and he still carries the personal responsibility when they were announcing all these cannibalistic decisions about attacking ukraine recently because as long as the regime is active he is safe but other people could jump off yes like today we had Yimashev, the son-in-law of the ex-president Boris Yeltsin. And he just retired from the community council of Moscow city, where he is also an owner. And he said, I'm not going to participate in this. So it's a big step. And that's learn, Alexei, learn how to be an advisor. In Russia, he's a billionaire owning half of the moscow city well what i can say when i tell them that i don't have an apartment that i don't know oh an apartment in kiev and my car my vehicle is from 2007 but then these people come to me and say wait a second how is that possible because you do work with your mark and then these people are coming to the interviews and saying how is it possible after all these years that he works for a corrupt regime and yet is uh, not a multi-billionaire? But that is a lyric side note. And of course, there is an information campaign against Putin's assistance. 
uh, it is a good program. It makes them or aims at making them think about the future. Because his health is definitely not perfect. You can see certain aspects of it. And at the least, he's not getting younger. And uh, these materials push his immediate surroundings to think about the future. I would not go as far as to tell them to go and finish him, but, you know, let's remember how did Stalin die. They just, he just did not get help when he needed to get it. Uh, oh yeah, of course, Yosef uh, Viseronovich Stalin is taking a rest, so close the door and leave. Khrustanov, <laughs> bring me a vehicle. Uh, that's a phrase from a movie. All right, so let's take a look at the girl. This is the picture. She lost a leg and the second one is uh, damaged. And she also lost an arm. If you know, please give us, uh, refer us to the name. Uh, let us know. We'll try to help her. All right, see you tomorrow, Alexei, and we will elaborate more on this subject. And have a good evening, everybody. Goodbye.